Good evening and welcome to our discussion group, our Wednesday night discussion group. We're in the middle of Proverbs. Proverbs 15 verse 18 is where we are tonight. And Ariana is going to open us up with prayer. All right. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for the opportunity to gather online and uh, not only worship you, but learn about you to study your word and we ask that you would just open up our minds tonight, God, allow us to learn more about you, soften our hearts as we learn more, to, more about ourselves as well and our relationship with you. And we just ask that you would intervene tonight, your spirit would uh, do something powerful in each and every one of us that we would be excited to uh, go out and just be your hands and feet, uh, even if that's through a smile or our words or our actions, God, we just pray that you would shine through us bright. And as you do that, God, we just ask for healing in each person's body right now. Uh, for those listening, those not listening, Anne's dad, I know myself has, have been in pain. And um, God, I, we know that you are a God of, of healing and uh, you, you want to uh, make our bodies like new. And so God, we just ask that you would encourage us to be active, that you would um, just place a little tap on our shoulder that we need to be a little bit more um, active so that our bodies can move right and do what they're supposed to do. But we also ask that your spirit would be with us and um, be with us as we heal, because we know that it's, um, it's possible. And we reach out to you in prayer when we're in pain, when we hurt ourselves uh, like Anne's dad and, um, or when we're just feeling pain, it seems to distract us. So remove that from us so that we don't have anything distracting us from your your word, your love, uh, when you're talking to us, God, we just give it all to you right now. No matter what we're feeling, uh, we just surrender everything to you. And we ask that you would speak to us tonight in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ariana. And thank you all each of you for being wisdom seekers for being here. There's a lot of other places you could be. And I'm just grateful that you're here that we can continue this journey through Proverbs. So I will share my screen and we'll pick up where we left off two weeks ago. And thank you for giving us the week off last week. I went to a really important training and um, that was a valuable time. So we are in Proverbs 15, verse 18. And what I'll do is I'll just, as usual, I will just read it in the NIV version that I have on my screen. And if you would have other translations open that you can share and just help us unpack it and see if there's any treasures to mine out of each verse, any way, different way of looking at it. And hopefully is that big enough? Whoops. Yeah. See that? Okay. All right. So verse 18 says a hot tempered person stirs up conflict but the one who's patient calms a quarrel. And so definitely we have a contrast here, right? So I will go ahead and, and do this one, do this one green and do this one red. Does anybody else have a different wording in the, or translation or a paraphrase that says it in a way that would help us to kind of get the gist of this? It's pretty straightforward, but, or maybe you have a story to tell. <laughs> The um, Orthodox Jewish Bible, uh, and I'll, I won't use the Jewish words, but it says an angry man uh, stirs up strife, but he is, mm. but he that is slow to anger pacifies a quarrel. Pacifies, second half, okay. Second okay. one's not too much different. Yeah, I like the word pacify, though. That's that, you know, when you have a baby and you put a pacifier in their mouth, you're like calming them down, it's like, uh, or a pacifist, right? Somebody who's who's um, for peace and not war. Pacify. Oh, calm. It's not pacifist. Patient is calm. So there we go. Calms. Yeah, pacifier calms down a baby. Take notes, Ariana. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> True. Camden did not ever take a pacifier. He did not like a pacifier. We'd spit it out. So he was yeah, a hard Dr. one to calm down. Yeah. didn't like him either. He spit them all out. So did Andrew. Andrew really 
Megan lived with hers on her mouth. <laughs> that was mine too. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Oh goodness. So, um, do you ever do you see yourself in this? Do you, is there are there other people that you can think of a situation where this has been so true, where you've seen somebody come into a situation and they're angry and they're hot tempered and it just makes the situation more volatile um, versus the person that can come in and just be a peacemaker and calm everybody down and help people be reasonable. Happens all the time. <laughs> the message says hot headed. Hot headed, that's is, another, yeah. The same as hot tempered, but it's hot headed. Hot headed is a phrase that we're more familiar with. So. Oh, you, just, you see this all the time. Um, typically when families get together, unfortunately, I don't know, families are just comp complicated, but um, especially around times when there's stress or maybe the holidays, which are coming up, you know, um, and people are hanging out and, and topics come up and people feel strongly about them and you get a, a hot, temp hot headed person in there it just has to be vocal about their opinion about everything and um how would we how would we be a person who pacifies or calms i mean how do we i mean i think i think we would all look at this verse and say i want to be the patient one who calms a quarrel would right my right we would all say that that's what we're striving for yeah jamie well my sister robin always says to pick your battles if it's not worth yeah. it leave it alone yeah, 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 and I think I think people would. I would rather have relationships than be right. That's yep. kind of my motto. I would just rather, you know, not make the topic at hand more important than the person in front of me. So, anybody else have some wisdom on this one? How to be a patient, calming person. Oh, is that, are you waving your hand, Steph? Yeah. Okay. Um, my, I know that Lee's said angry, and mine uses the word wrathful. And I was thinking about the way it says that, a wrathful man stirs up strife. It's kind of like um, the hurting hurt. And, it's, right. and I think it's because they want somebody to commiserate, you know? Yeah. They, 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 find, they find help in, 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 in everybody being, you know what I mean? Everybody uh, hurting, yeah. everybody being angry, or everybody, you know, then they don't stand out alone as the as the oddball, that awful person out. You know what I mean? Yeah, good point. That's pretty deep. Yeah, that, that's that's. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's very what? true. That's a good observation, Stephanie. Uh, Ariana, you, know, you had your hand up. Yeah, I was gonna say um, one thing would be like to show sympathy to try to view the other person's side before reacting. Um, while you like take, you know, you're taking a big deep breath because we're so quick to feel and to be in our emotions when we're upset about something. But a lot of times it's just that we're not understanding. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, that's one of our core values in this group is to, um, try to understand and get clarity versus being right and, and making our opinion, trying to feel like we have to make everybody agree with us, right? I, I love that song, Walk a Mile in My Shoes. I think of that when you say that, Re, Walk a Mile in My Shoes. When you walk a mile in somebody else's shoes, you tend to have a little bit more empathy for them. Yeah, right. that's a good word. Uh, Stanley, were you going to say something? One of the reasons people get angry, they... They uh, start a project and they the project becomes the important thing rather than the relationship, and they that becomes the, the primary thing make is to be successful in the, in their project and instead of the relationship of the workers. Wow, that's also deep and true. I mean, that that's what we were talking about putting something other than the relationship. You know, if you don't really value relationships, I could totally see why you would burn the relationship in order to get the project done or to be right about a topic. But when we understand that God is relational, Father, Son, and Spirit, and that's like the highest value, the, that is heaven, right? It's relationship with God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. So 
there really is nothing more important than the relationship. And I think even in Christianity, sometimes we forsake relationships for being right, don't we? And we beat each other over the head with Bibles and Bible verses and doctrines. And I'm sure it makes God weep. I'm sure it makes God weep. Um, there, any any there, other comments on that? There's, um, I can't remember. I think it's Paul's writing. He says that uh, uh, love uh, overcomes, uh, oh, he doesn't say it this way. Love trumps all the, the rules and the Torah mm -hmm. and the law and, and love tr trumps that. Um, that's not his words, but. Right. I think First Corinthians 13, right? About the clinging symbol. And um, is that where you're thinking? I don't remember where it is. Yeah. I just remember. Also, I, mercy rejoices against judgment. Yeah. Actually, there's a lot in the scriptures, isn't there? Yeah, good, good discussion. Let's um, move on to verse 19. The way of the sluggard, this is a different topic. The way of the sluggard is blocked with thorns, but the path of the upright is a highway. Interesting. So we have a, we have a highway or a pathway and it's blocked with thorns for a sluggard, but it's a highway for, I really would like to hear other translations on this one. There might be something that's a little more clear. Yeah, um, Stephanie or Jamie? Jamie. Uh, nothing seems to work right for the lazy man, but life seems smooth and easy when your heart is virtuous. Oh, okay. Nothing seems to work right. Okay. The road of the uh, sluggard, or lazy one, is a thorny hedge, but the um, way of the right is a highway. Up The way of the upright is a highway. Straight. Yep. A thorny hedge. Oh, Janice Hauser's getting on. <gasps> oh, Mama Janice! Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for the chorus. Yeah. Oh, Mama Janice! <laughs> Hi, Janice. <laughs> welcome. She's we welcome right, you. Janice. Yay! <laughs> this is your intermission, everybody, to say hi to Janice. Hi, Janice. <laughs> hi, Janice. Hi, Janice. Hi, Janice. <laughs> I can cut this part out. <laughs> Oh, I'm just teasing. Um, so Jamie, could you do me a favor and read the second part of that verse in the Passion? Okay. But Locked life thorns. Uh, yeah, but life seems smooth and easy when your heart is virtuous. Okay, so smooth and easy. Okay. Have you so, noticed how it, it contrasts laziness with righteousness? That's an interesting. Yeah, that, that is interesting, Stanley. So the NIV version, and there are several different ones that I used was um, said sluggard. What what do you all have? We had um, lazy people walk lazy path overgrown with thorn bushes, but those with integrity travel a wide level road. And somewhere it said unrighteous. Is that right? A right? Oh, the upright is righteous. Right. Okay. There's another. So, proverb by Solomon somewhere, something like the sluggard is a brother to him who is a great destroyer. Oh, oh, In King James. a great destroyer. That's interesting. That's King James. It's King James. Yeah. Sorry, we got thrown out. We had to go back in again. Oh, I wondered what happened. Okay, so Stanley, are you saying that was verse 19 that it says the sluggard is a we're the only ones that got thrown out. It's a great destroyer. No, I, no, there's somewhere else in the Bible. It might be. Oh, in somewhere else. Yeah. Proverbs uh, eight. Think, Proverbs eighteen nine. Oh, Proverbs okay. eighteen nine. Oh, okay. It's in the future. Okay. In the future. <laughs> <laughs> he said it's in the future. <laughs> yeah, that's a like around December. <laughs> <laughs> it's next year's. <laughs> We're going. <laughs> Um, okay, so for another word for sluggard is lazy. Another phrase for blocked with thorns is nothing seems to work right or a thorny hedge. Another word for upright is righteous. And another word, another phrase or description for highway is smooth and easy. Anything to add to this? Yeah, I'm kind of getting a picture. Right? Are you? 
have you ever walked, have you ever picked raspberries in the wild or uh, walked through a field oh, with briars or, or thorns or whatever? It's slow going, isn't it? You have to pick your way through and, and if, I guess if you're lazy or slothful or a sluggard, you don't, you don't plan your path ahead. Mm. It just takes a lot longer. Mm. It takes a lot longer. Uh, but those who are, what's, I guess, upright. Um, righteous. What's, what's another, what's another description in one of your translations for upright or integrity. righteous? Those with integrity. With integrity? Travel okay. a wide level road, right? <laughs> have you, have, have you ever been traveling? Like, well, no matter where it is, but I was just thinking cross country where you finally get to an open road and you're just like, okay, this is awesome, right? Um, I, so I, in my mind, I was just thinking of two paths. One is very slow because uh, because of the thorns. You have to move and pick your way through. It's necessary, but it, maybe it's unnecessary because you haven't, you haven't quite planned or worked at your... Um, how to get from point A to point B to your destination, whether that's a literal trip or metaphorically in life. But things tend, even though there's probably still potholes and pit stops and stuff, when you, when you plan, when you integrate all your self, it's more smooth and easy. Yeah, that's, a, that's the Mark paraphrase. I like the Mark paraphrase. That was good. And yeah, another, John. The, the message says diligent for the, the diligent, oh, diligent. Walk down, down a smooth road. Okay. It's Stanley, also, did you have something to add? It's cool. also painful to walk through thorns. Yes, it is. I, I have scars. <laughs> right. Yeah. Stanley? Do you think um, the contrast with righteous and laziness is that lazy people would tend to be self-centered? You know, that's a good, that's a good thought, because normally you would think the contrast would be righteous and unrighteous, right? Yeah. Or lazy and, and productive. Yeah, but is the righteous is such a broad, such a Yeah, I like with difference. integrity, um, it's a person who is, you know, in the picture you gave, the person who is preparing the way, they plan the trip. They're planning their life. They're making wise decisions. So their life goes more smoothly. It takes a lot more work. It takes work. It takes saying no to yourself. It said, and that might be the righteous part, right? To be able to defer your own gratification, to choose something that's good for you down the road, even though it's hard right now. Um, that, that would be kind of an upright way of living. Okay. Any other thoughts on this? Or uh, I do. Okay, Stephanie. Um, along with along with that verse, and, and I think Mark said it was in another another chapter, and it's also in chapter 20, 20, uh, 22, 5, and it talks about thorns and snares, and it says, "He who guards his soul will be far from them," and so that kind of goes along with the upright on a highway. I mean, if you're guarding your soul, you're going to be on this highway that's smooth sailing instead of being caught up in the thorns and the snares. Right. That's, that's really good. And, you know, we're not talking about, oh, one's saved and one's not. We're just talking about how, how hard or easy your life is, the right? Journey. Yeah. The journey. So, you know, if you choose to drop out of high school and not get your diploma, it's going to be a little bit thorny getting a job. Whereas if you choose to um, stay stay the course and do the hard work and hunker down and get a diploma, it might make it a little bit smoother. And that's just an uh, off the cuff example, but um, it doesn't mean you're not loved by God. It doesn't mean that right. you're not saved it, or that God doesn't care about you. It just means that as this father is teaching his son in the book of Proverbs, he's saying, Hey, you know, if you are, are lazy and you don't prepare for your life, it's going to make it rougher. Very good. Oh, and now we're to the wise son. So then he goes on to say in verse 20, a wise son brings joy to his father. <laughs> because guess what? When your children go down that thorny path, guess who else gets to go down that thorny path? <laughs> you, <laughs> mom and papa. 
Um, a wise son brings joy to his father, but a foolish man despises his mother. I have a question. Yes. Um, I, I it says a wise man makes a father glad. Okay. Doesn't he make the mom glad too? Yes. And if a foolish son despises his mother, doesn't he despise his father too? I, I yes. Wanna, I don't understand why it separates the good for the son and the bad for the mom. <laughs> Yeah, I think we talked about this before. Um, I think it's poetry. Um, I think I think it's poetry. And and you're right, Stephanie. Um, a, a child that's in trouble is going to bring grief to both mother and father. Um, Joan, did you want to add to that? Well, the message says intelligent children make their parents proud. Lazy, <laughs> lazy students embarrass their parents. <laughs> okay. There you go. Cool. Yeah. That, Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, sure. It is it, as far as poetry, you know, poetry has meter and yeah, rhyme and, and um, a pace and um, juxtaposition. And I, th I think the writer is just using, continuing to use that by it's not pitting the father against the mother or um, that the, the child causes different reactions in the in the in the parents. It's just that kind of rhythm in the in the writing. I think. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, Jamie? I just want to say, uh, the second half of mine says, but the man who shames his mother is a foolish son. I don't get that. Say it again. The, the man who shamed his mother is a foolish son. Yeah, I think, um, who read, was it, yeah, Joan, can you read the message again? Because that kind of, I think that might yeah. bring clarity. It says, says lazy students embarrass their parents. Oh, embarrass. Okay, I was thinking of a bit embarrass and shame. Um, you know, shame was a big, a big deal, right, Pastor Lee, in that yeah. culture. And so if you had a lazy child who was always getting into trouble, that would bring Embracing. shame to the family. Oh, okay. And I'll just put embarrasses um, or brings shame to both. So it is, it is both. And I'm, I'm glad you said that though, Steph, that we could clarify that. Thank you. Verse 21, folly brings joy to one who has no sense, but under, but whoever has understanding keeps a straight course. So we're talking about a journey, like these last three verses, how this journey is going to go. Is it going to bring joy and be smooth or, uh, or straight, the straight course, or is it going to be one of shame, embarrassment, thorns, and pain, and folly. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, the, this parent uh, is trying to teach his child how to be wise and have a life that is maybe not as hard and painful. Any other translations that you like the way this was worded or it makes it more clear and understandable? Well, I like it. Jamie might like this from the message. The, the empty-headed treat life <laughs> as a plaything. <laughs> I know she likes some of the words that they use in the message. Yeah. <laughs> How does it? Gets down, the message gets really down to it. I like the message. Is that the part? Can you read the whole thing, Mom? The empty-headed treat life as a plaything. The perceptive <laughs> grasp its meaning and make a go of it. <laughs> the oh, I like it. <laughs> I like it too. The empty-headed, I love that. <laughs> yeah. So the person with understanding is perceptive. I like perceptive. Makes a go of it. That sounds British. <laughs> Makes a go of it. <laughs> Mine uses the word senseless, but I like empty-headed better. <laughs> oh, people with insight, yeah. So the voice says, foolishness brings sheer joy to those who have no sense. But people with insight steer a straight course through life. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was, I'm going to ask myself the question, why, why does folly bring joy, bring joy? Even to somebody who doesn't quite get it, why why is folly or foolishness joyful? You know, why does it bring joy? And I was just thinking, the foolish don't keep rules. Right? Mm -hmm. They 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 have less structure typically. Um, they 
it's more than just happy go lucky. It's, it's like really only care for yourself. And when, when, when the, the, the rules are out and the borders or the, the rails are gone, people think, Oh, this is good. This is great. You know, you know, when the cat's away, the mice will play that kind of, that kind of thing where, Oh, we don't have to worry about any, you know, doing anything right. We can do whatever we want. And that's kind of, that brings joy to those who don't think forward think about to the, the consequences. consequences down the road. Okay, if I if 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 I play into the fact that there's no rules and um, I can get away with this, woohoo! You know, let's, so, let's have fun. But that that doesn't end up well. I'm glad you brought that out because look at the, these two verses. Both of them use the word joy, and I think they use it in totally different ways, right? A wise son brings joy to his father. That's a good kind of joy, right? Like, um, like delight and, and happiness. Whereas the second verse then, verse 21 says, folly brings joy to one who has no sense. So one is a good kind of joy and one is a, diff a bad kind of joy. I mean, if you want to say good and bad, but um, yeah, you're right. Living for the moment, woohoo, life. Don't have to think about the consequences right now. But then the end of that is, is more painful. Did Orthodox, anybody else? Yeah, go the ahead. The Orthodox Bible uses the word live, L-E-V, which means discernment. For, oh, for understanding? It, yeah. It, uh, folly, uh, folly is, to him, is, uh, uh, wait a minute, folly is joy to him that, is destitute of discernment. <laughs> I have to leave the Hebrew words out of there. So. <laughs> destitute um, of discernment. Of discernment. I like that. Understanding man walks uprightly. So, do Lee? Do you have um, the translation? I don't know if you have word for word. But the joy mentioned in verse 20 and the joy mentioned in 21, are they the are they different words or are they the same word? They're different. I'm checking to see if they're from the same root. Oh, I see. Okay. One, uh, one is satmach and one is sin. I can't write that. <laughs> yeah, I don't have the, the word joy in 20. It's uh, They use the word glad and he doesn't use the Hebrew word. Oh, okay. Correct. 20, 20 is glad in the King James. Yes. Okay. Uh, in 21 is joy, and they're two slightly different words. The difference in the, yeah, in the Hebrew. It's, it's Shimkah. Yeah, Shimkah. Uh, yeah. 21. Oh, no, I'm not. And 20 is um, same up. So it's it's a little it's a little different. I'm checking to see if it's no the 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 one in 20 is a primitive root. Um, and joy is probably from that primitive root because it's very similar. But as, as it is in the English language, it depends on the context, right? So the context in verse 20 is a good thing to bring joy to your parents. The context in 21 is, is kind of a careless joy. It's, it's not a joy that's grounded in good outcome for the long haul. Would you, would you say? Yeah. Yes, Stephanie? Um, yeah, I, I agree. Um, mine says the same thing um, Lee was saying. And I think because, because it says the word folly and discernment in the same verse, I think somebody who's foolish, see, doesn't even know they're foolish. That's why they're, they've got joy. <laughs> it's deceitful joy. <laughs> deceitful joy. Ooh. Or just oblivious joy. You know, yeah. They don't even realize it, that they, they don't have, you know, so they're happy. And, and, and what they're for the moment yeah for the moment <laughs> until they're until they're in jail or something <laughs> they get busted. Yeah, right uh, oh. yeah yeah it's it's you know what it's really good oh yeah joan well the living bible says if a man enjoys folly something is wrong <gasps> oh okay he enjoys his folly, but it's enjoying just... folly there you go yeah yeah, that's, I think it's good to point out that it will feel good at first, right? Woo, no rules, I can do whatever I want, woo, you know, that, 
that does have a, a feeling of liberation and joy, right? But the end of that, which is, I think, what he's trying to teach his son, will be painful and it will have consequences at the end of the day. So it's not a true joy. I like oblivious joy, Stephanie. That really, that nails it. Excellent. Okay. Mark, are you, are, yeah. Mark, are you reading from a, a book that translates every word from, a, uh, has every Hebrew word and then I'm, translates? I'm on blueletterbible.org. Uh, and so, yes, it, it puts a Hebrew word with all the English words. And it's, it's, um, and I don't worry about looking at the NIV or any other, I just, it comes up as K King James version. So the English is King James. And then it yeah. um, gives the Hebrew word, not yeah. so much, not always the usage. It, sometimes it's hard to find how the word's being used um, in blue letter Bible, but it's still helpful. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm familiar with a blue letter. A blue letter. Um, I was. I've always been looking for one that uh, has uh, has it almost interlinear to right. through and then to English. Right. And right. I haven't found one yet. Does the blue letter have that? Orthodox Jewish Bible is the closest I've been able to get. Yeah. Doesn't the blue letter have that? It's. Does the blue letter have it interlinear? It has a strong definition in it. Pardon? Has Strong's has the Strong's definition. It also has the theological workbook of the Old Testament reference. If some of you are wondering what they're talking about, <laughs> there. If you go to Bible Gateway, um, I'm not Bible Gateway. Um, what's it called? Blue, blue, letter, Bible. blue letter Bible. Blue letter Bible. Yeah, on online, anybody can ac access it. Um, there's a lot of resources there that help you see the, the original word in the original language, what it might mean. Uh, Harmony of the Gospels is in there. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of good stuff on Blue Letter Bible. Many, ver thought, many versions too. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. I had hoped we'd finish tonight, but I don't think we will because I'm going slow. Anyway, we'll just, we'll just go till we, we, till seven. I mean, till eight. Um, Verse 22, plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. This is a verse most people have heard before. Um, oh, we yeah. quote it. We use it when we talk about le leadership or just yeah. in life. It's good to get counsel. Yeah, much as said, yeah. Our experience is most people go out and make a bunch of decisions and then they come to us when it's not working out so well, <laughs> instead of coming and asking <laughs> for counsel, right? Like, Hey, what do you think of this? I got this decision. I'm trying, I'm praying it through. What do you think? And not that we have all the answers, but I'm just saying in general to anybody, yeah. it's good to ask and get counsel among a lot of different, not that you're going to take one person's advice, but you, you, when you get a lot of counsel, you can look for threads and you can pray it through and then let the Holy spirit help you um, make a wise decision, many advisors. So sometimes many advisors can be confusing as well, just to put it out there. Too many <laughs> but, um, I think overall, this is a great, a, a great principle for life. Anybody have any thoughts on this one? Nope. nope. Pretty self-explanatory. Yep. Yep. So verse 23, can you read that Mark? A person finds joy in giving an apt reply, and how good is a timely word? Yeah, this isn't a Sorry, contrast. I didn't hear the first part of that. Can you repeat it? Yeah, a person finds joy in giving an apt reply, and how good is a timely word? A person finds joy. We're back to joy again, and this is a good kind of joy. A person finds joy in giving an apt reply. Anybody else have a translation that would make that? We don't say apt. A lot. I like I like the passions one. How's it everyone, go? Everyone enjoys giving great advice, but how delightful is it to say the right thing at the right time? Oh, how delightful it is to say the right thing at the right time. At the right time. I really like that one. Mine says a word spoken in due season. How good yes, that's the one I'm used to hearing. That's King James, right? Yes, naturally. 
If she doesn't a remember word. anything else. <laughs> a word, say it again, Stephanie. This is the second part. A word spoken in due season, how good it is. Yeah, so it'd be like if somebody's grieving, a word that the season for that is maybe less words and just comfort. Or if somebody is about to do something really foolish, you step in and say a word that fits that. And I, I like that, how delightful it is to say the right thing at the right time. How many of us can say, we say the right thing at the right time? Not me. <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? Yes. Um, yeah, so I like these, both these verses seem to go together, right? About counsel and advice. Yeah. And um, like, okay, a, a word yeah. fitly, a word fitly spoken. Yeah. Lee, did you want to say something? I got two. The, okay. the uh, joy is the same joy uh, as in verse 21. Is it's, it? It's Shimka mm -hmm. um, or Simka. And uh, the word um, for timely advice, I think, is is Davar, D-A-V-A-R, which can mean matter, problem, concern, uh, talk, word, or promise. So it's a wide range of things that it can be, uh, can be used to there. Oh, yeah. So, so timely is, can you read that again, that list? It's matter, problem, concern, talk, word, or promise. Yeah. The word is D V A R. D A V A R. D A V A R. Yeah, that's so that's a wide range of of um of what that of what a good apt or a good word would fit in all of these situations. But yeah. especially when somebody's having a problem or a concern, most definitely. All right, let's see if verse 24 falls, uh, leads, and is in the same vein. The path of life leads upward for the prudent to keep them from going down to the realm of the dead. Nope. <laughs> that seems like a different thought. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think so too. I guess that is a contrast. The path of life leads upward for the prudent. Mm. No? No, it just says that he may not go down for it's just a yeah. Okay. The realm of the dead is Sheol. So the grave. Anybody else it's have a different trans? Yes, yeah. she Sheol uh, means uh, unknown. An unknown. Oh, place. really? Yeah. Unknown. Unknown place. Really? I says hell. Exactly. <laughs> no, I mean, that, and yeah, that, and that's the problem. And that's, yeah. that's the problem. We we take Hebrew and Greek words and just throw hell on it, and we, we don't know what the usage is. And if it means unknown place, yeah. But we have a picture of Dante's, Dante's Inferno um, as hell. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what is what's yeah, trying yeah, to be I'm said? Glad you said that. I'm glad you said that, Jamie, because that that that's that's helpful to. Kind of, kind of know what the writer is saying, as opposed to our imposition on the text. So, what's actually being said here? Is it? Are we talking life and death? Are we talking the path of life leads upward to right. keep them from going down to the realm of the dead? Well, the passion says the life paths of the prudent lift them progressively heavenward delivering them from the death spirals that keep tugging them downward. Wow. That's a mouthful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, that, whether that's a place or it's a way of living that is life-giving and right. it is a way right. that of, of life, up bright to the light. Right. Um, Whereas, whereas the Sheol or the unknown place is is dark and it's unknown and it's it's hell. It's Dante's it's, Inferno. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say it's not Dante's Inferno, but I would definitely say that it's you know, this it's a fun place you want to be. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's it's not a fun place. 
It's not a fun place. Yeah. yeah. Most likely for this father teaching his son, he's trying to say, hey, <laughs> there's there's two ways of living. You can live a way of life and abundance that's going to end um, with joy, right? We keep talking about these two, these contrast, or this other way is going to be painful and sorrowful and separate, right? It's going to separate you from relationships. One, one, if we're, if we're looking at the last six verses, one is going to lead toward life-giving relationships. One is going to lead toward separation from relationships. Right. Any other ha- translations that would help us with this? Now, this is a real, this is kind of a little trickier one to understand as much. There's Janice's face. Hi. She's working. Hi, Mama. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, there's some life giving right there. <laughs> Look at that pretty smile. Hi, guys. I'm sorry. I haven't been able to talk with you guys, but I've got a real bad crisis on my hands right now. So everybody just pray. I'm going to be up and down, but I just had to hear you guys' voice today. Oh, so okay. To just, we love you, Mama Janice. Love you guys too. Thank you. We'll definitely be praying. She does a lot of ministry there, taking care of people and their problems. She's so beautiful. <laughs> um, anybody else have another translation that would help with this? Or do you guys feel like you we've we've grasped this is about as good as we're gonna I get it? Way, I agree with the way that you you um presented it because mine says the way of life. And so okay. it's, it's your journey that um that if you keep your eyes heavenward um you know then 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 you're you're going to be wiser than if you keep it grounded to the the overall of sin and everything else is going on you know what i mean yep yep life and death it's a theme throughout scripture right that's why he said therefore choose life (laughs) choose life yes Verse 25, the Lord tears down the house of the proud, but he sets the widow's boundary stones in place. All right, Lee, what is a widow's boundary stone? You would, just because you're a widow. (laughs) I like this verse, yep. What's a widow's boundary stone? Anybody know? No. Um, Okay, um, I got a lot of notes on this one. Oh, good. Hashem will uh, destroy the uh, house or dynasty of the proud, but he will maintain the boundary of the uh, uh, widow. And the widow does not necess- uh, does not simply denote a woman whose husband is dead, but rather a once married woman who has no means of financial support and is therefore in need of special legal protection. Hmm. That the word the word I use uh, the for uh, widow is uh, alman almana, uh, and that the notes here that I have are come from uh, a, word, a website on that word. So that's helpful. But, I'm sorry. That's helpful. Uh, Mark, Mine says, say the yeah, Lord ch- champions the widow's cause, but watch him as he smashes down the houses of the haughty. <laughs> so what's being contrasted here? Pride and humility? Or ha- haves and have nots? I don't know. What, what's being contrasted here? Well, the proud yeah, don't feel like they need, need anything. Okay. And the widow does. I mean, the widow definitely needs something because... She has no way of, of supporting herself in that culture. Yeah, and if you go back to the verse that, that's next to mine, it says Psalm 146.9. And that says, um, the Lord watches over the stranger. He relieves the fatherless and the widow. But the way of the wicked, he turns upside down. So relieves he relieves the fatherless and the widow. He takes care of. He protects. Yeah. He he supplies. He you know all those things. So the the widow's boundary stone is. Mine doesn't say boundary stone, so I don't know what she's talking about. 
Yeah. Well, mine doesn't either. Mine just Interesting. Says oh, yours just says boundary. Okay. So okay. boundary, I mean, maybe that's how they delineated. So if you think of a woman who has maybe some property, um, and she would delineate it by maybe putting stones around her property, right? Um, maybe somebody who doesn't have a husband or someone to support her um, needs somebody to say, no, this is the boundary. You won't take anything from else from this woman. You know what I mean? Like they won't yeah. go in and take her land or take what she owns. But, you know, even if she doesn't have a man to stand up for her or, and we're talking a different culture here, obviously. No, so it's a metaphor for justice. justice. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because a lot of injustice is done by the, the proud and the, and the wealthy to the poor, the needy, the widow. The right. Poor. Oh, that's really helpful. A metaphor for justice. Yeah. Okay. And the orphan is often put into this uh, this same situation. The widow and the orphan, it, they, those words go together. Yeah. frequently in the Bible. yes they do there's typically no advocate for them right because they need an advocate yeah yeah 146.9 says that yeah. psalm 146.9 yeah oops the message says he stands with those who have no standing oh i so love that, that. Be, yeah because if her if she's alone her husband's dead yeah, women had no, had no they have no rights. In the community. I love that. That's beautiful. The message stands with those who have no standing. Well, let's go on to verse 26. The Lord detests thoughts of the wicked, but gracious words are pure in his sight. The Lord detests the thoughts of the wicked, but gracious words are pure in his sight. We're talking about a heart condition here, I think. Yeah. Mine says abomination. <laughs> the instead of detest? The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination. Okay. The Lord detests wicked ways of the thinking, but, the, but he enjoys lovely and de delightful words. Enjoys. Okay. Yeah, enjoys. How pleasant it is to dwell in whatever that song is. How good and how sweet it. Oh, never mind. The wrong song. <laughs> so, I I don't know that this is needs much more explanation. I mean, of course the thoughts of the wicked are going to be detestable. I mean, that that's right. just and the and. And those who are pure, those have gracious words. I'm sorry, those who have gracious words are pure. So, so this this is a contrast of of a heart condition, but also what comes out of the heart too. Right. Um, gracious words come out of a pure heart. Right. Yeah. Um, the greed the greedy bring ruin to their households, but the one who hates bribes will live. The greedy bring ruin to their households. That's kind of obvious, but the one who hates bribes will live. So that's just, I mean, talking about an attitude toward resources, right? Could It's money in our world, but it could be other things. Greedy toward, I mean, look at King David had um, everything. everything and he want, you know, he was greedy and wanted Bathsheba, you know, um, the one who hates bribes will live. So the, the one who can't be bribed to, uh, they stand firm on their integrity. And, you know, and who knows, these these all could go in together as far as protecting the, the one who ne is needy. And often you have the, the poor people getting, um, taken advantage of by the rich people, right? The greedy ones. We see this in our own culture. Um, yes, Jamie? The one who puts earning money above his family will have trouble at home, but those who <laughs> refuse to exploit others will live in peace. Nice. That was passion? Yes. I'll just say read it in the passion. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, yeah, that's I really love good. that one. That is beautiful. Yeah. It, it is when, when there is somebody in the household who has a, an appetite for something to the ruin of their family, it, it does bring destruction, um, whether it be gambling or any other kind of, I mean, it could be anything, honestly. Right. We get addicted to all kinds of things. Um, the, and then the bribing, the one who hates bribes will live. The, I mean, um, yeah, the go word, ahead. The, the word wicked is raw. And it, it can also mean troubled rather than just, just wicked, but it, they could be troubled. Is that, is, is that the word for greedy? No, that's the word for uh, wicked. I think he's in the previous verse. Oh, the previous verse. Okay. 26. Okay. We're in 27, but yes, 26 oh, is sorry wrong. Sorry about that. That's okay. All right. <laughs> I, can, I, I can jump around. <laughs> wait a minute. What? I know. I'm like, wait a second. I'll see that word in this verse. Ra, R A? R A H. H. Okay, I had it right. And what does that mean, Ra? It can mean a lot of things, but it. it it mean it can mean mean troubled wickedness wrong bad evil disaster, uh, but I the I, w I was interested in the troubled. I mean, sometimes we call wicked people and they're not really wicked; they're just troubled in some way. Oh, that's a great. That's great. I'm glad you brought went back to that and brought that up because when I read that, I think of thoughts of the wicked. Right? These are the ones plotting out murders and how to steal from people or you know and maybe maybe it's somebody who's super troubled yeah interesting well we didn't quite make it we we came super close one two three four five five we have five more verses we'll we'll catch those at the beginning of next time um i don't want to do i don't want to rush it we have six Six, 28, 29, 30, 32. Oh, yeah, you're right. Six verses. Yeah, we can't do that in one minute. Oh, it's eight o'clock. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Are you folding? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'll put a book marker there and come back and look at the heart of the righteous and the mouth of the wicked. So that'll be, we'll pick that back up. And next time we will be in we will make it into 16 so we will be over halfway there <laughs> so next week i will be at my dad's house and um, i am staying in a hotel this time because the cottage i usually stay in is not available so i will have good internet so i should be able to hop on and host help host and join in the meeting so let's plan to be together next week and That'll be Proverbs 15, starting in verse 28. And now I will go ahead and close with prayer and pray for Mama Janice. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together that we can just savor in a, in a meander through your word and dig out the treasures that are there for us to ingest and make a part of us. Help us not to just read these words and, and go, yeah, yeah, wicked and the wise and, and then go on with our lives, but to really look in the mirror and say, where in my life, Lord, am I being wise? Where am I being foolish? And how am I bringing life and death with my words? And God, I just pray that these times, these one hours that we have on Wednesday nights will transform us and shape us as we sit with your word and it becomes part of us. And Father, I thank you for every person on here and everything that there is going on in their lives. We all have our own struggles. But right now, we lift up to you, Mama Janice, who we have not seen in a while. And it just brings great joy, the good kind of joy, to our hearts to see her. And she's asking for prayer. So we just pray, Father, that whatever she's facing on her job, we know that you're using her powerfully as a minister of the gospel there. And I just pray that you will give her every tool and resource she needs to uh, do your work there. She's your hands and feet there in Colorado Springs and I mean, Pueblo. And um, Father, I pray that the place where she is employed will be blessed because of you living in and through her. So give her strength and give her everything that she needs. We lift her up with great love in Jesus name. Amen. Amen.
You got this, Mama Janice. I love you guys so much. We love we you. Love too. you. Yeah, I'm gonna try to make it next week if I can. It all we depends would. On what's going on here at work? So okay, we would love it. You look cute. Look how cute you look. <laughs> I know. Look at her. <laughs> oh goodness. Well, I'll stop recording. Please feel free to stay on if you would like to. Love you. Um, Stephanie.